Welcome back to Gamer 5. Today we are playing a certain magical virtual on. I'm a Jess. I'm a Zach. And uh, this is uh, for our anime month. This is a uh, combination of the Sega uh, game virtual on and the anime series. What, what is the overall series called? I, I guess fans just call it the Rail Deck series because there's a certain magical. Uh, index, and then there's the side story, a certain scientific railgun, which Jules would know more about the full series. Yeah, I have like base level knowledge. I'm just a virtual on fan. Yeah, we were, we we're supposed to have a, a, a supreme recording today, but uh, uh, but Batman uh, threw out his back, and uh, other uh, sickly Batman is sick like he usually is so like they're both mia yeah so you get you, you get in the two of us today it's like just cut. either take it or leave it but, but please take it just, just cut the fucking legs right off this show yeah. right now we're just squirting blood we're just <laughs> we're, we're like uh we're like the main character in Venom thunderbolt in the opening murdering people to jazz no the the uh, i thought the zeon guy was the main character uh, I thought they both were. Yeah, I guess they were. Or the, the Xeon pilot. Yeah. With no legs. Yeah. Then it gets even more depressing and they get rid of his fucking uh, arms. Yeah, he, he loses his arm in the fight and then they're like, we, we built you this badass mobile suit, but you have to cut off your other arm, to use, your last limb to use it. <laughs> you have to plug in these little stubbies into the control panel. That, that whole OVA was misery for I just love the part where they're celebrating the dude tries to hand him the beer and he tries to like pick it up with his little knob and he just like nubs the beer and then like this big burly dude just looks at it and just starts bawling. It's like, I, I, I'm i sorry. Just, oh. So yeah, this is a crossover between the Rail Dex anime series and Sega's Virtual On series, which they've long forsaken in favor of more shitty Sonic games. <laughs> and the occasional Did Yakuza. I do, man? <laughs> well, to be fair, Yakuza games are really good. So, it's the trade-off. You get shitty Sonic games, but then you also get Yakuza, which is a good series. So, how is the single player in this? Is there a story, or do you just go match to match? So, or? yeah, there's a story, and in the story mode, you, you'll play through uh, each character's story, and then you'll lock more chapters and whatnot. I'm just doing random uh, missions because I don't know, or just I'm just doing random single player battles because I don't know if the audience wants to sit through me just like skipping story text. <laughs> Fair enough. And this uh, this has not been released here, and there's what no plans to release it. Yeah, it's 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 Japanese only, which I can probably probably be due to licensing for the Rail Dex uh, anime. Yeah. Which is weird though because Sega published uh, Denkenki Buko Fighting Climax which had characters from Index in it and that got a US release. So I don't know. I think just because Sega hates Virtual On and they figure the West doesn't give a shit about Mecha which is depressing because one of my favorite Sega franchises next to uh, Streets of Rage and Virtual Fighter. I honestly don't know what my favorite Oh, I do know. I do know what my Sega fran franchise is because Sega now owns Megami Tensei. That doesn't count. <laughs> Fuck off. You have to go pre-Atlas bio. Uh, does Toe Jam and Earl count? Yes, it does. Toe Jam and Earl. I also would have been... If Ed was here, he probably would have said Comic Zone. Comic Zone is pretty awesome. Comic Zone is pretty dope. Hard as fuck. But that, really wasn't, yeah, that was only a single game, though. I don't know about the series, but... So the, I like I like Toe Jam and Earl as a kid, but I have never revisited that as an adult. I don't know why we haven't done a recording of that yet. You guys should do. That. You guys should do Toe Jam and Earl. Because I don't think I've ever. Because I thought I thought what the game that I was playing was the first one as a kid, but then I I recently saw gameplay of the first one. Was like that's not the game I played. It was the second. They're making a new one. Yeah. And then there's that one on the Xbox. No, it's not. <laughs> no, there was one on. Shh, no, we don't speak about that. <laughs> Wasn't that awful? <laughs> I never played it, so. Okay. I haven't either. I heard. You know, maybe maybe we should try that one. I don't know. I was just I was just baffled that it was not on Dreamcast. 
Yeah. Did you know that the Xbox originally, because I guess the Sega Microsoft partnership was go, supposed to go so fucking deep that the original plan was that uh, Xbox games were go, or Xbox consoles were going to be able to play Dreamcast games. Huh. And they never did, and that pisses me off. Because I have an Xbox yeah. and a Dreamcast, and we'd like to have both. Both. Why didn't we get Metal Wolf Chaos in, 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 in Virtual Odd? Why is it Metal Wolf Chaos in Super Robot Wars? I know, right? So, so this game, in terms of its roster and its gameplay, is based uh, primarily on the Dreamcast entry, Oratorio Tangram, which is the best one. Because the, uh, the one on PS2, Mars, was was slow and kind of disappointing and Force is pretty much an arcade version of Mars. Yeah. And you can get the Dreamcast skins as DLCs. These are the Dreamcast designs. Who are powered by Dreamcast? Right? Not in this one. It's pissing me off that the Dreamcast skins don't even have the Dreamcast on the back. Oh, that's, that's Isn't that fucking lame? What I want to know is are those suits just power armor or are those giant Dreamcasts? I think, no, because if I remember in the c opening cutscene to Oratory Tongram, there was a cockpit with the pilot inside okay. attached to a giant Dreamcast, and then like a, a suit just like, a mech suit just hollowed over it or whatever. <laughs> just... <laughs> so, so for, for anyone who's, um, for any Mecha or Gundam fans, all the designs are done by Kotoki Hajime. Who's like a, a really like he, he's a really popular Gundam designer, like uh, but he he has a specific style where he likes just putting a bunch of labels on his suit designs. Yeah, I I'm actually not a big fan of like house like when I they're in a fire I never put any any sort of like uh, labels or details on. Yeah, because his shit will have, like, here's 50 Anaheim Electronics and Earth Federation logos on it. Like, but I don't want that. So it makes... So this game, um, it does have, like, I think, uh, two major... Uh, three major uh, differences in terms of past entries. One is that there's super moves. And you notice next to my life, there's a little like round CD icon that's just, just blue, and you're just slowly filling up. When that's yellow, you press the touchpad and you do a big super move. And all the super moves are related to the powers that all the Raildex characters have. So like, I do know the main character Toma, his main power is that he can negate other people's powers, so his whole special attack is I just punch the fuck out of people. <laughs> you think it would like... It would like drain their, their super button here. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there's a stats effect. I mean, I, all I did- Temporary block, temporarily block them. Yeah, here it is. So the, so the other uh, big difference is that this game has a scoring system. And normally, in, 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 and I guess most fighting games in general, you would win a match either by you know, depleting your opponent's HP or, you know, timer runs out and who has the most wins. Yeah. So the way this works is that you get you get scored depending on uh, how uh, just uh, landing shots for like if you do a long distance, a long range shot, you land a melee attack, you down an opponent, you get graded. And then if you keep on dodging during the fight, you'll get pe penalized, so you'll get points deducted. And so if the timer runs out and you have more health than your opponent, you can still lose if they have more points than you. So it's just, it, it's pretty much the, instead of playing cowardly, they just encourage you to keep on hitting. She has no hands. No, she's, she has the in her sleeves. No, I meant the mech. It's just like, oh, no, it, yeah, it's, well, the mech can amputate itself. It has detachable limbs. But doesn't have a detachable penis. Does it have a consensual penis like Enzo Romore? The first cut is a defense. Did you watch that rap video? No. Well, Maybe. I'll tell you Some this. Some of it. <laughs> he's, he's innocent, but can I just sue him for sexually assaulting my ears? Uh, this is America, so yes. <laughs> he has a laugh of... 
Enzo Amore has a lyric in the song where he says, uh, From the ashes I rise like a phoenix, middle finger to the sky, gripping my consensual penis. Because his penis was consensual at the time. <laughs> Here, the balls on that consensual penis. Right? See, don't watch the news. Also, I think we have the title for the episode. <laughs> the balls of that consensual Here's what you do. Don't watch the music video. Listen to Jim Cornette's commentary as he watches the music <laughs> video. That's way better. <laughs> I, I, I would think, like, Jim Cornette would just die before the end of it because he just popped a blood vessel out of anger and just bleeding out. Jim Cornette's anger could, like, fuel a, a fucking, um... It could pa generate power to an entire city for, like, years. I... I think we can solve the energy crisis if we just invent, like, a generator that is pa fueled by anger and just, like, hook up Jim Cornette and Alex Ross to it. <laughs> <laughs> Why Alex Ross? Because he's angry. <laughs> Kingdom Come Alex Ross? Or maybe I'm thinking of... You think about Alex, Alex, Alex Jones. Well, yeah, why don't you compare Kingdom Come best comic artist ever, Alex Ross, to that asshole? I don't know. We can hook him up to it too. He he can manage the generator. <laughs> just put. It's like, man, I just want to go back to painting comics. So why do I need to man this generator? Actually, why ha hasn't DC done an animated movie of Kingdom Come? With all the stories that have been ad adapted and the animated movies, why have they done Kingdom Come yet? That, that, is, that is odd. I recently saw the, um, the adaptation of the Eunice contract. Wait, with Kevin Smith at the end? With Kevin Smith at the end. <laughs> uh, not as bad as I thought. They they did some uh, you know interesting interesting ways to, to adapt certain things. Like the main thing they did was they completely replaced the cyborg with uh, with Jaime Reyes, uh, which Blue is, Beetle. Hey, that's cool. I like Jaime. Yeah, which I like Jaime too. And then uh, as as far as abilities, they're pretty similar. They're, they're kind of similar. And then uh, so I mean it, it it wasn't that it wasn't that bad. I mean there's per uh, there's certainly a different uh, relationship between Jaime and. And uh, Changeling, which kind of changes part of the story a little bit. Is he is he called Changeling or Beast Boy in this? Uh, both. It's weird. Well, Why because he, because he was Beast Boy in uh, in uh, uh, Doom Patrol, uh, yeah. And then because when it, when it starts off at the beginning, it's like it's supposed to be like because uh, it starts off like. Very be like the very beginning of the team, and then it shows it shows how they get Starfire in the team, and then it's like flashes forward, like when the team's established, and uh, Dick has already Dick has already left, become Nightwing, and uh, Starfire is now as the leader of the team. Isn't now? Isn't this in that like uh, movie universe continuity? No clue. I was like, I don't. Because that's what I heard. Because they, it's the same movie continuity as Justice League War and Titans vs. Justice League. They don't really mention anyone else outside the story. Fucker goes giant. See, it's not the same without the Dreamcast in the back. And then remember in the old, in the one on Saturn, it was a Saturn. Which sadly, Sega Top Sonic would have been piloted in that. Would have been, would have been a beautiful. Actually, did you know that there's, um, so that Super Hard Wars mobile game that I always trash on, Cross Omega? Yeah. You know that Sega, that Sega Hardware Girls anime? Thank you. Sega Girls? Yeah. And, and you've got like Mega Drive Girl, uh, Dreamcast Girl, Saturn Girl. There's also a Genesis Girl who's American, like, you know, English, Big Tits, Cowboy Hat. That's funny. So. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, there's also a Genesis Girl. She right. commits genocide. So, uh, so you can play the book of Genesis on Sega Genesis with music by Genesis. <laughs> I was about to say. Uh, so so uh, Cross Omega is developed by Sega for Namco Bandai. And so the special uh, promo thing, they had Seha girls in it, and like, well, how are they in there? There's no mech. 
They made, and you could splicey splicey this image in. I'll give you the image you can put in the episode. It's an original Sega console themed mech. I think it's called Sega Garion or whatever. And it's just a Dreamcast Saturn Mega Drive mech. But it's potted by these, you know, Lolly Sega girls. Like, can Please you just tell me it's a combiner where they, they each pilot, like, home pilots the Mega Drive. And, like, <laughs> I wish. Here's what you do. You swap out the pods, you put Sega Toss Sancho in it, and you have the most hot-blooded machine ever. No, here's what you do. You just have Sega Toss Sancho just go Ultraman and become giant and fight. I want to grow Ultraman and turn into that robot. No! He, so, he he goes Ultraman and becomes giant, and then just dons armor that's just like a Dreamcast duct tape to his chest. <laughs> and like a Mega Drive on his shoulder. He has like a, a Sega light gun. It's just a Sega light gun. It doesn't shoot or anything. <laughs> it, it can if he if it's like if it's him, he could find a way to power it. Fucking uh, Menasaur. Remember, this is the fucker that survived a nuclear uh, missile in, in space. Yes, yes, it is. Have you ever seen those rock, those uh, yakisoba commercials he did in Japan? Maybe. Where he, he he's playing like a uh, he's playing like another hero type character, but then all of a sudden he'll turn into Sega Cross <laughs> Uh Me and uh, other Alex were talking about it. So, uh, Virtron's been in several Super Robot Wars games. But this one in particular got into Cross Omega, and I kind of wish it would be in the main console entry, because they have no visible pilots. So the story was either they were sentient, or they had pilots controlling them, but they were like off somewhere in another dimension. Like they had like some sort of link to them. But I wish they were in a, a console based one, just because it would be nice to actually have them have pilots in SNW. There's a dude in here that pilots an edge lord, like. Um, uh, Virtroid with the, with the scythe, and he's voiced by Bakugo from uh, Macadamia. I call it Macadamia for short. I'll splicey splicey a picture of the new hero for the movie Godzilla. It's just Godzilla dressed up as a Hokage from Naruto. Naruto. Okay. It's like a human-sized Godzilla. It's like you're not fooling anyone. They showed an image of a uh, young All Might, and he's drawn anime style, and you can see his eyes, and I don't like that. <laughs> All Might should not have eyes. You no, know, you should no. They should always be closed. You'd never see them, and he should only be drawn American style. I don't want to see him drawn anime. <laughs> so yeah, I'm using the Dreamcast original colors. He's using the default color scheme, which for this game, I actually prefer the blues. The blues and whites, I don't know about you. Yeah. So that uh, the one that you're fighting against is the one that's supposed to be that pilot's color scheme. Yeah. His... Okay. And this is the one from the Dream... The color scheme from the Dreamcast version. But the model is, is still the same. Here. Right, because they don't have Dreamcast except for that. Is that the only difference, or are there other physical differences? No, they all... They're just skins. But I meant from, from the Dream... The uh, yeah. Other than they obviously the, their model way better. Um, there's a few other gameplay tweaks, like, in, you know, Virtron, you could always dat, do this boost dash, but now you could also slide on your knees. Top 11 slide. You're, it's like that platinum being dangerous. You can even drop down there, there, which is cool. Also, the, um, uh, melee attacks, the way they were done was that you just press the attack button if, if you're far away for a range, and if you're close range, you just change to a melee. Here, now they map them separately, so you have like... Oh, nice. So now you have like your left... your Because uh, they're like heavy variants or whatever, so you have uh, both L1 and... Uh, L1 and L2 are your... Uh, L1, L2, R1, R2 are four different types of range attacks. And then triangle is your melee. So for some reason I started playing uh, Resident Evil 6. I bought it for like six dollars. You mean Biohazard 7 Resident Evil or Resident Evil 7 Biohazard? No, Resident Evil 6. <laughs> oh, I, 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 thought you were talk, I thought you were talking about the. No, I almost bought that one, but it uh, 
the, the sale ended before I did. Because I was, I was contemplating, I was like, oh, I'm going to buy it. And then I went to go get it, and I was like, fuck, sale's over. Resident Evil 6, it. as I like to call it, Michael Bay presents Resident Evil. Because <laughs> they just turned into a big dumb action yeah. movie. For some reason, there is a button that drops you on your ass, and you just, like, crab walk. <laughs> just, just, just fucking Chris, just like... <laughs> yeah, well, not, not like, not like essential, but you're like, uh... Because you, you can't really see exactly what they're doing in the camera unless you check up the other opponent, but... I'm Jesse, like, Jesse's doing it off screen. I might spicy, spicy something, but you're like, walking like this, so you have your knife, and you're just like, attacking people like that, <laughs> scooting on your ass. <laughs> And it is dumb, and I do it all the fucking time. I'm just like slashing the ankles of zombies and shit. That so that game was so bad that they, that's why they had to like re redo or kind of sl slightly reboot the franchise yeah. with seven. I don't know. I'm actually because I'm I'm playing the story through with with a friend. And I'm actually kind of enjoying it because you know we're just playing it, dicking around and. It's not too bad, but the controls, like, until I, like, fucked with it, the default controls were fucking god-awful. <laughs> it was a little, it was, it was half messing with it and half, like, just getting used to it. But, like, the first time playing, I'm like, oh my fucking god, what the fuck. So, Fei-Yen, we have the poster waifu by it. And there is a Hatsune Miku variant, which also made in Super Robot Wars. Do you have it? I have the figure, yeah. I was gonna say, do you have it up? Can you get it in the game? It's or? not in the game, oh. sadly. Oh. I know. I know. I oh, would... yeah, yeah, I know the thing, because, yeah, it has laser leaks. Yeah, yeah, she's got beam leaks. Also, laser leak is a good uh, good contender for the title. So, uh, I'll play her, but which color should I do? Uh, I, I prefer pink. I that That's the one I like the most. I don't know if do you, you do you, but... I kind of like this one with the weird asymmetrical stocking. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool too. I'm assuming uh, her default is this because no, they're okay. they're all like on a team. Oh okay. I'll, I'll do the classic thing. Oh wait, press X by accident. You know what? You know what pissed me off? Metal Gear in in America, you would still have to press circle to confirm. It's like no, just I don't know. Keep it uniform. Yeah. I mean, it makes I mean, more sense in Japan that circle is confirmed and X is cancel. Yeah. But, I mean, at the end, you can always just change the controls, so. Yeah, that's true. So I'm just going to fight generic waves of enemies. Fei-Yen, I always like Fei-Yen because uh, when her health depleted, she would get like a, like a gold super mode, like G-Gundam. Which... Run the sky! <laughs> also, I, I fucking love that, uh, what was it, the, the Geon Ultron, that it's, it's a fucking, it, it's a fucking, uh, wing Gundam that fights, that fights like a G Gundam. <laughs> yeah! Well, it's, it's the Ultron mixed with Dragon Gundam. Kind of, because it doesn't really have any Dragon Gundam parts on it. That, that would have been a cool concept. I thought it kind of does. Not, not really. No, all the all the parts are, are Ultron parts. All right. Well, I mean, it has but, it has a lot of the Chinese aesthetic that Dragon yeah. has. But yeah, no, you're right. It's just a lot of it screams Dragon yeah. Gundam to me. But the only, the only thing that it really takes from the Dragon gun is the color scheme. It, it's more of like what it is because for so what it is is it's. Uh, it's an Ultron gun, and they, they modified the, the like wings on the back to look a little bigger. They did give it a different team job. They gave it the, the wolf and the tiger on the shoulders, and then they gave it extra arms. So because you because originally the those little like claw thing, the, the the like dragon extending things, those folded into his arms. But on the the G Geon, I think it's called, they're just separate. That sort of fold into the shoulder. Oh, okay. And they have separate arms. But they they would on the Ultron, they would fold into the arms and become the arms. Uh, you know what I really liked about like, because the the uh, the shoulder the shoulder pad was actually hollow, and they would the they would fold into the inside of the shoulder. Okay. What I really like about Build Diaries this season is that I noticed a theme where they're just they're combining 
designs from different series and just making fusions. Yeah, that, that, that's a pretty... Uh, I, I really like that. that because, uh, I really like them doing the fucking... Uh, the IBO makeover on the, on the goddamn... Uh, this is the Gabaldi? Gabaldi, yeah. Which is... Uh, the Gabaldi is a weird, like, random mobile suit to kick. Because it's like... Yeah! Oh, is that from... Is that from Zeta or yeah, Double Zeta? Yeah, it's from Zeta. I think it's Zeta or, or Double Zeta. It's around that oh. area. <laughs> Maybe. Well, they shared a lot of suits. Yeah. Double Zeta's, like, right after. Yeah. Uh, Camille's still, like, fucking a comatose, retarded vegetable. Spoiler for a 30-year-old anime. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm just gonna go back and finish that anyway. Because so. I, 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 I did start and I did get... I... Was it like you got up to the point where his mom blows up? No, I did get past that. I got I got up to the point where... So he's teamed up with... With Char or Shit Quattro. <laughs> Shit Quattro. Or there's a, you know how his name's Quattro uh, Vagina? Yeah. There's a Gundam game that actually spells his name Quattro Vagina. I shit <laughs> you not. I shit you not look it up. I've heard of a lady with two vaginas before. That That's just excessive. She's got four vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that was Gamer 5. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a strong ending. 